If you love loose watercolor florals, this is for you. I put together an in-depth beginner-friendly series. Every Friday this month, we're going to paint a different spring flower together. And this week, that's a daffodil. Hello, my friends, welcome. My name is Shada Campbell, and today we are painting daffodils. I can't wait to show you step-by-step step how to paint this beautiful spring flower. If you're a total beginner, that's awesome. This is the perfect, like, loose watercolor floral content. If you need that extra bit of help, I have a daffodil watercolor worksheet available. It's on my Patreon site. You can sign up there. It's two bucks a month. You can sign up for as long or as short as you like. Download some of this extra helpful content and support the channel while you're at it. Okay, let's get started. For our supplies today, we have hot pressed paper. It has a wonderfully smooth texture and that's why I love it. The practice piece that I did here was done on hot pressed and I just really like the way that the paint settles into the paper in these weird, wonderful ways. I also have a color swatch and all those specifics are listed on the worksheet. You're gonna want paints. I'm using my Mungyo set. Supplies are linked in the video description. As for brushes, you need a large and a small round brush. My large is a number eight. My small is a number four. And these brushes I've been using a lot. They're from Princeton and those again are linked in the description. You can purchase them on Amazon. Okay, let's do colors really quick. I am using uh, Naples yellow and I have just wet my brush and I'm scrubbing at the cake of paint, bringing that pigment over to my palette. I'm also using Joan Brilliant. Uh, for the peachy color here, I'm using yellow orange and Joan Brilliant and I like the way it gives me this peachy orange that's not too like crazy bright orange. Then finally for my green, I have mixed olive brown with a little bit of sap green and it's giving me this green that's very warm and springy and I really like it. You could also try mixing yellow green in there. That would be a nice color. And uh, I think that's about it. Let's start our daffodil painting. So here we go with our Naples yellow in the larger round brush. I'm going to paint this one petal at a time and you just add a bit of pressure to the brush and make that messy petal shape. And I tend to paint those top three petals first. Make them fluid and organic and very perfectly imperfect. One could be a little large, it doesn't matter. And then we paint the bottom two petals, just kind of pulling that brush across the page, running it around, making a big messy shape and I'll complete that by maybe just connecting those petals a little bit in the center. Okay, let's paint another one. Let's do two daffodils. This one's gonna be on a bit of an angle, just like the practice work that you see there. I'm gonna start again with the top petal, just big random organic shapes, and then we'll do the side petal, and then just one petal at the bottom. And that's really all you need for the daffodil that's kind of angled away from your viewer. It's the side profile. Then still using that larger round brush, I'm picking up my green and we're just going to run it down the page, making a stem that's thin in some areas, thick in others, so it looks a little uneven and wonky as any flower stem does. Make it a little thicker where it meets those petals and if the yellow and green blend a little, that's not a bad thing. We're going to also um, add some leaves and I'm kind of just wiggling the brush as I run the belly across the page and uh, I'll make these large wide oval shaped leaves that come to a nice point. And I like, as I said, the way the paint settles into the hot pressed paper. It might be a little bit more uh, transparent in some spots. It might have a dark spot that settles. That's not a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. That's what I love about loose watercolor flowers. You're not being too precise about things. You never know quite how things are going to go. <laughs> At least I don't. <laughs> Okay, next step with that smaller round brush, we pick up our peachy orange and we're going to paint a little circle here made up of tiny little lines. And that is going to be the stamen for that first daffodil. And if the orange blends a little with the yellow, that's okay. If the yellow's already totally dry, that's okay too. Then for the daffodil on an angle, we get to 
show that long conical stamen. So I'm sort of running the brush across the page the way I would for a petal and trying to make this cone shape. Then I use the tip of the brush to do those little tiny lines um, just across the top of that cone. And I'm kind of just working out the shape a little bit. Again, it's loose, it doesn't need to be too perfect. So now we let that dry. You want those petals to be totally dry because the next thing we're going to do is add some detail using a wet on dry technique. And now I'm taking my yellow ochre or Naples yellow and I've mixed it with a bit of that orange and I've got a slightly darker color here. You could also use raw sienna for this. And we're just using our small paintbrush to add some little shading lines near the stamen to show that the flower is a little bit concave and we're adding some lines on the petals to show that the petals are, are textured and that they're not flat and they're not at all cartoon-like. And then we're going to take a darker orange. You can either just have a more concentrated paint or you could mix a little red in or whatever. And we're going going to just darken the, um, the little ruffles on the tip of the stamen. So darkening those little lines around the, uh, the circle of that stamen. And then same thing for the stems. Just grab a darker green. You can mix a little orange into the green or just use a green with less water and add a bit of shading near the flower where the light wouldn't hit as naturally on this stem or put a little dark splotch at the base of the leaf or at the top of the leaf. It's totally up to you. When you're painting this wet on dry, you can decide how precise you want to get, but you definitely have the ability to get quite precise. It just depends how loose you like your florals to look, and that's all part of developing your own style. But that's my daffodil pretty much all done, and I'm quite happy with it. Remember friends, if you're getting started with watercolor florals and you want a worksheet to help you through this daffodil, that is available on my Patreon site and all the content, there's four years of content now, is just $2 a month. Finally, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because this month I am sharing a different spring floral every Friday. If you're new to watercolor flowers, this is the kind of content you don't wanna miss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.